What's up, my cool cats? Um, it's me, TVB, and welcome to the inaugural TVB cast. I am your host, again, TVB, and I am joined by... What's her name? Hey, you know, uh, one of TV, TVB's friends named Duke. What's up, Duke? Um, so let me ask you, um... Is Duke, um, so what is it named after? Is it named after, what is it, fucking John Wayne? Because I know this is a reference because I'm, I know this is a boomer reference, but, um, I don't know, I'm more of a classy guy, so. Uh, like, like, uh, Duke, uh, uh, is mainly just kind of a nickname. I understand the, uh, like where people get the John Wayne reference from, but no, it was just a nickname that was given to me. I was gonna put uh, Duke Alia because that was like a homonym for one of my uh, online friends I used to talk to, but uh, he never picked it up. But that was a cool ass name, so I picked, so I t- took it. But I only go by Duke on Discord uh, just because that's what people usually know me as. Yeah. Um. So it's not a reference to something like Duke Nukem. No, not really. But I. I I should make it. I mean, I mean, do you have that same exact rough voice as, you know, fucking Johnson? Nah, I can't no. do that. Nah, I mean, that, I mean, I thought so, because it would have been very difficult, honestly. But, no, um, fucking, um, yeah, um, yeah, which reminds me, um, I can't stand John St. John. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, John St. John, um, I, I wanted to go more detail, I wanted to say something about John St. John, but it's like, he lost his cool by, you know, a couple years back, and it's like, fucking hell. Oh, um, yeah, um, so, how are you doing, Duke? Oh, I'm, I'm pretty much doing okay. Um... Uh, nothing exactly special happening, but... Yeah, I mean, what I could safely say is, um... Okay, so what I could safely say is, uh, but, but I am very, very tired, as usual, um... That's what happens with stress, you know what I mean? <laughs> but no, um, what I was gonna say, um... So, I have a very, I have a question. So, this is actually related to the name Duke. Um, Is it also referenced, like, I know it's not a reference to anything, but it's like, is it also referenced to, what is it? It's another Boomer reference, uh, fucking Dukes of Hazard. Like, you got that little Mustang. No, sorry. No, like. No, that's something that I'm not familiar with, I'm sorry. Yeah, Dukes of Hazard. like, this is before your time, and again, this is also before my time, but it's like, I know a lot of vintage, you know, TV, so, um, fucking, yeah, like, I know whatever I say is, an un- is considered uncultured to anyone, but, you know, whenever I open up with, um, what's up, Daddy O's, or what's up, you know, I have that little, um, Wolfman Jack sounding, so it's like, um, it's like, um, American Graffiti, and also, hi, Orion, um, yeah, we have a guest here, another guest, Hello. Orion, how's it going, Orion? Uh, I'm good, uh, this is the podcast you were talking about, right? Yeah, we just talk about every, everything, you know, and it's okay, a podcast, amazing. yeah, uh, back to what I was saying, you know, because, um, because this guy right here named Duke, um, I, I was trying to picture some references here or there. I mean, it's like the Dukes of Hazard, but this is a show made before our time, so it's like, no, I, no, like, I'm kind of a guy who actually is more into, you know, those old school vintage stuff, so it's like, um, so it's like, when I have that little soft-spoken voice, you know, it sounds more like Wolfman Jack. Of course, nobody knows what who Wolfman Jack is, because... You know, that's before our time. Yeah, 
in order for me to say something about Wolfman Jack, I probably should recommend you American Graffiti. Great movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, made by the yeah, made by George Lucas. Great movie. You want to go like more in depth to it so that uh, like uh, we can uh, just uh, just get a synopsis of like what's happening in it. Okay, so this this is one of those um, '70s projects that takes place in the '50s. You know, it's a period piece about how teenagers rebel against you know adults. You know trying to do a little bit of street racing here or there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is a movie that was in the 70s, but also has 50s aesthetic. You know, this was during a time when shit like Happy Days was a thing. You know. You know. It's like, you know, like... Like, I mean, okay, it's common now to have nostalgia poured over in media, but back in, like, the... 70s, you know. They ha always have those 50s aesthetics, you know. It's like in the 90s you have to have 70s aesthetics, you know, shit like that 70s show and, you know. But. I honest to God think that nostalgia is such a, like, it's great to have nostalgia, don't get me wrong, but. With the media nowadays trying to make money off of it with all these, and I don't want to go into a big rant. My point is, it's a 70s movie about the 50s, and it's made by George Lucas, who would, down to make, who would down, go on to make Star Wars and all that stuff. Mm hmm Yeah. Uh, so we're basically talking about, like, uh, things we're nostalgic about right now, right? Yeah. I mean... To be fair, people have grown up with a lot of stuff. Like, you know, to be fair, the name George Lucas seems nostalgic. Nowadays, it's for the wrong reasons because the prequels and all that stuff. But it's like... All right. <laughs> yeah. No, um... No, like, um... What was it? So... Yeah, that's basically all it amounts to. Just American Graffiti, great movie. But um, what else did he do? THX 1138, you know, f with Francis Ford Coppola. Uh, and we're talking about nostalgic stuff. I have a bit of a topic on that. Go ahead. Okay, so um, so are you familiar with the video game SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom? Everyone here knows oh, about yeah, it, of course. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so tell me, were you excited when they announced Rehydrated back in like... Three years ago? When was it? Like 2019, 2020? Yeah. Yeah, it was great. It was some great stiff. So like, so like you've actually played Rehydrated and stuff? Yeah, I did. I did. It was... Oh, I, I'm still yet to play it. I haven't... What did you think about it? Well, the thing is, I have yet to complete it because it's been actually a long ass time that you know. But I did play it, and from what I've played, it it's great. You know, it's a great. Ex it's like I'm not a I'm not crazy with remasters nowadays, but it's like it's still a great re for what it is. It's a great remaster game, you know. Well, uh, the thing about me is that um, we're kind of sort of on the negative spectrum of Rehydrated because, like, I played, like, the original countless, and I literally do mean countless times. Yeah. And just looking at the footage of Rehydrated, I noticed that a few things were... Off, off. and missing. Yeah. No, that's... Yeah, notably, notably the, uh, the... Remember the Robo Patrick boss fight? Yeah, I, I do know, you know, from the original game, yeah. Yeah, why... Is he so damn slow and rehydrated? Like, all the oomph is gone. Yeah, like, at least in the original, you know, because I remember playing it on the GameCube back in the day, um, I remember how... I, what was I gonna say? Um, he had a lot, like... Don't get me wrong, it was hard, but at least it... At, it, at least it was a good hard, like... But it's like, I don't know, man... In Rehydrated, it's like, it's hard to the point where it's just piss your, like, I, 
I'm a sucker for challenges, okay? But it's like, you can't even complete it that, you know, it just, even the development. Yeah, well, for, for me, for me, the, for me, like, when it comes to the Patrick Moss fight, difficulty isn't the issue. It's just how it's presented. When, when, like, remember when he does that spinning attack, the answer is all, Great Barrier Reef! Like, like it's just so underwhelming yeah. looking and rehydrated. I just want to say that is a great Patrick voice, so... <laughs> No, um... Wait, what'd you say? No, that was a great um, impression you did. You know, the, um... Fish announcer? Yeah. Yeah, that, that never leaves my head. Yeah, that, <laughs> that's actually... That's actually... Yeah, that's actually perfect. And you know what? Speaking of the fish announcer, in Rehydrated, he doesn't commentate on the final phase of Robot Spongebob. Yeah, that's... That would act... That's what annoys me really like you know what's the worst thing about rehydrating to me though what's up we were essentially lied to about the returning beta content like robot squidward patrick's dream the muscle bob phase they were all just created into a really underwhelming multiplayer mode yeah like that's yeah. the thing it's it's just i think yeah like i remember playing it i liked it but the thing is and i know i'm going to sound like a hypocrite because i just said oh it's great it's great no the thing is it's just that there isn't really anything like maybe because i didn't like i liked what i seen like but it's like everything else is just it wasn't really necessary like this is one of those like like again i'm I'm not crazy for remasters, and remasters are, like, it can be done right, don't get me wrong. It can be done right. I've seen a lot, but it's like, yeah, that's the thing. If you bank, they only like, so people would like the game they played back in the day, and they're banking it on nostalgia. It's like, at this point, you gotta have to create an original IP, or, or at least take the original IP and make something not just, not only make a follow-up, but actually good. Not just, and no, don't even reboot it and make it dark and edgy. I'm not asking for that mm. because fuck that shit, okay? And don't try mm. to make it a movie. Just make it a game, okay? A game that I can play, not a, a game that I could watch. I, I, and, and Neil Druckmann's just covering his ears, so... You know what? Like, like, there's a lot of other things about Rehydrated that kind of like uh, threw me off. Like, remember how I said that like Robot Patrick is slower? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it's just me, but general movement with all three playable characters feels slower in Rehydrated too. Yeah, like that's probably why I haven't I even I played the game in like. Me, but it's something I noticed when playing it. No, you're not even alone. Like, it's been like a fucking long ass time since I've actually played the game, and it's like, I don't know. It's like. There are things that I like, but then there oh, are no, things so that I... They literally just reused every single bit of audio from the original. Most of it doesn't sync with the new cutscenes. Yeah, I've noticed that. I've noticed that. It's mm -hmm. like... It was... It was... It was uncanny. Like... On one hand, I can see why, but on the other... You gotta have to put in effort, and they didn't really give a fuck, and it's like... Do you really want this? I will say though, I do kind of like the rehydrated SpongeBob steel pants. It's like it looks like something out of Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, that yeah, like that's. Um, but no, um, I think the reason, like, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's like uh, you sound kind of far away from the mic there, bud. No, I know, I know. I'm just stretching here. Um, yeah, I'm just stretching. Um, the thing is, is that. Um, when you look at most of the, um, what is it? If you look at the IPs that's been, you know, the old IPs and, you know, and they're like, oh, like, the thing is, studios are smart, you know? Every single company is smart nowadays because they know what you like, what I like, what everyone likes, you know, back in the day. And then they'll just, and they'll just do it just to ruin the property, you know? And I think it's a no, and it's a no-brainer because you, we've seen a lot of big-name companies do it, you know. 
Uh, are there any re are there any remasters that uh, you actually like to change the subject a bit? Uh, it's a tough one, actually. Um, okay, so I'm trying to think for a moment. I, um, if we're not counting every single Mario or Zelda remaster, <laughs> no, um, no, um, in terms of remasters, um, I think the best I could think of right now, because believe me, I'm trying too hard to actually think. Um, um, I'd say back in 2007, there was a Tomb Raider, um, anniversary, and it, and it's fucking glorious. Like, and not just visually, gameplay-wise, like, yes, it still, visually it holds up, but it's like the gameplay, they take the classic original games from the 90s and then update in the 2000s, and it looks amazing. Like, it, like, it's a far cry, you know, but it's like, but no, um, I'd say the, no, yeah, that's one of them, but actually, um, I can't even think anything any at the moment, because not only am I tired as all hell, but it's like, no, I, no, that one, that game, I like. Uh, well, I can tell you a remaster I'm excited for, uh, Kirby's Eternal Dreamland Deluxe. Oh, what's up? Uh, you know what? You know about the upcoming Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe? Yes, yes. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty excited for that one because I played the demo myself. It feels really nice. All right. Yeah. yeah uh, when I heard it was being remastered, I thought, okay, this could be something, or it could be Sonic Colors Ultimate. Uh huh. Yeah, like, oh, someone else is doing this. Yep, and we got another guest. Yes, the guests keep popping and popping. And here we have Bumbler. Hello? Yes, how are you doing, <laughs> Bumbler? <laughs> so, um, ready to say it? One, <laughs> two, three. VC Lit! VC <laughs> Lit! VC <laughs> <BC> Lit! <laughs> VC lit. Oh damn, y'all are hella quiet. Oh, there we go. It's better. It's better. Yeah. Um. We we're already talking about nostalgia. And, about uh, what? Nostalgia. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, we were just on the topic of uh, remasters. Mm-hmm. Oh no, you know, I just hopped in. You guys keep going. Keep going. All right. All right, so, well, actually, what do you think of uh, the upcoming uh, Kirby Remaster? Me? Uh, I, I, everyone, I guess. Oh, I, I don't know, because I haven't seen it. And quite frankly, I don't really give a fuck, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Duke? Yeah, Duke, what do you think, Duke? Uh, uh, personally, uh, eh. Just, just eh? Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I was not listening to this entire conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Yeah. Shout out. So what were you doing? Are you, were you trying to, what were you trying to do? Um. Oh, like right now? Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to, uh, like... Uh, Jerk off. Right now. No, 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 that already happened earlier today. <laughs> All right. Wait, did you guys talk about um, Definitive Edition GTA Remasters at all? Uh, I don't. Uh, uh, I don't actually play GTA. So. No, I play oh, GTA. Really? I play GTA, yeah. and it's like oh. the Definitive Editions did not need to exist. Okay. No, not really. <laughs> They, they were a mistake from the word go. And this is saying something from Rockstar. Like, like mm -hmm. I can say this from the bottom of my heart because I I religiously played Vice City and San Andreas mm -hmm. and also Liberty City stories, like, including the Ballad of Gay Tony. Four mm -hmm. is decent, but it's not, like, as good. But Actually, four is good. I have yet to play five, and I'm kind of ashamed to admit that. But, um, no, everything about Rockstar ever since it's like, shit. Like, 
like I tried getting into Red Dead Redemption 2 and I like Red Dead Redemption 2 feels it feels off like it's good it's just a half-baked game which with good ideas but it's like if I don't know at the end of the day fuck Rockstar <laughs> okay damn straight yeah damn straight and fuck its owner say, take two I, I gotta say I think um, Vice City Stories is the, probably the most underappreciated GTA game to like ever come out hell like, yeah man hell yeah, yeah. It's, like there, there are people who like who have played GTA who strip don't know that, that game exists and don't look out for it's the PS2, and you can play it, like, no problem off of any... Oh, yeah, like... Like, Slay or any ROM site. With yeah. With PSX2, like, boom. No, That's like, amazing. I played it in the emulator, oh, and... Uh, I actually oh. just thought of another question. What's up? Okay, so, um... Let me see how I... I don't even know how to word this. Um, have you ever played, like, a specific version of a game, and then when you played the new version, you think, why would it ever go back to the old one? Um... Like, any, like, definitive edition that doesn't make you want to play the original again. Okay, I, I will say, um, have any of you guys played, uh, Killer7? I have. Killer seven? I have. Kill I have. Okay. I will say that I played Killer7 initially on Dolphin, right? And there's something about that game being in low res and, like, at the original, like, cap 30 FPS frame rate. That when you play it on the Steam version, which is objectively like the best version to play it on, there's something that, like about it that like um, I don't know quite how to put it, but because there is like enough kind of wiggle room um, graphically wise, I guess because it's such a low resolution, I feel like playing the old version of Killer Seven, or not old version, like an emulated uh, version of Killer Seven, for some reason that it it feels a lot more like um a lot more authentic than the remaster version and all it really is is because it's at a lower like resolution so like the mystique and mystery of that game definitely gets heightened because you know it's like we are like scared or interested by what is not present so when you kind of muddy the waters a little bit um i feel like it becomes a little bit more authentic to the original sort of like a vision of what the game is um so in a weird way i feel like the specifically the killer 7 remaster version despite being the objectively best way to play it it uh -huh. loses some charm by being so clean which is fucking weird but killer 7 is like one of my favorite games ever and yeah I, like i, I noticed of... the complete difference between you know the gamecube version and like i remember playing the gamecube version um I don't have like I remember playing it on the Dolphin a while back, and then mm -hmm. and then I remember actually owning a copy but lost it, like mm -hmm. a physical copy. But it's like it's really different from between. But not only, not just that. Even playing this, I remember playing it on Steam as well. And I don't know. I don't know. It's like it's weird. It's really weird. Like. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's something about it. It ju it just feels different. It's like a kind of intangible feeling that's just kind of gone. Um, but yeah, that's that's it's. But I'm very glad they got remastered because it's such a fucking. That that that's like. A lot of people say like games, uh, are like our games art. You know, like I feel like that game is one of like the most strongest arguments to say that games are an art form. But then you have. The other end of the spectrum, we have like any AAA game that's came out that people like. It's the new game that came out and it comes out, and then a people year forget later, about no one, it. Fucking no, everyone forgets that it exists. Yeah. So you have the two spectrums. So I feel like our game is art. It's a spectrum. Some absolutely, some absolutely not. <laughs> but they're not movies, okay? They're not movies. Movie. Yeah. Yeah, like come on. Know your song for is, but whatever. Yeah, like no, 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 no. Like, like if you like Neil Cuckman is not gonna listen to this. <laughs> yeah, um, they're not movies. You know, you look at, and and this also goes to the stupid ass Sony fans. They're not movies. They're games. You play, you play a video game. That's why it's called a video game. You're not here to watch a movie. 
Which, by the way... Metal Gear Solid 4. Yeah. By the way, Last of Us sucks. Mm -hmm. I am not watching the goddamn HBO special. Or show, or whatever. I've never played anything related to Last of Us. I couldn't stomach it. So you're not missing much. I, I couldn't even finish the rest. It's bad. Uh, uh, so what I was talking about before, like when I mentioned, like um, uh, if there were any remasters or re-releases of games that uh, are just so much better than the original, uh, I had like uh, the PC release of Kingdom Hearts three in mind. Because mm. yeah, like 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 when, when Kingdom Hearts three first released, I pre-ordered it for the PS four, right? I played it completely blind, loved it from start to finish. Uh -huh. Then when the PC release came out, I have not touched the PS four version since. <sighs> I yeah, know it, no, I know what you're talking about. Feel better, but the mod support <sighs> is just absolutely insane. Oh, we lost the move. Yeah, Duke left for a little bit. Um VC lead. Yeah, it's VC lead. No, but uh, VC lead. No. <laughs> no, I know what you're talking about, um Orion. Actually, come to think of it, um what game was it? Um, I'm trying to think. Um, um, so, um, I don't know if this counts because um, I actually remember playing. Okay, so this is a game solely from my childhood. Um, you ever heard of the game Revolt? It's called Revolt. Revolt. Look this up. Okay, so Revolt is a racing game with mo with um, remote control cars. It, think picture Burnout, but with RC. You know, fucking okay. yeah, yeah. It's made by Acclaim, and you know, Acclaim surprisingly has a keno amount of fucking you know racing games from the nineties and to and early two thousand. It's like wow. But anyway, um. Revolt, I remember playing it on the PC. I love the PC version. I even remember playing it religiously as a kid before I went to school. But it's like, it's the best. It's like the best thing I've played. Like, it's like crack cocaine to me. I'm solely addicted to Revolt. And I'm even to this day, I'm happy that it that has garnered a strong cult fan base. But... Mm. All things considered, not too long ago, I remember playing the Dreamcast version on an emulator, and in terms of graphics, it seems off. Like, it's not saying that it's bad or anything. I actually think the Dreamcast version is just as good, but it's like, graphically, it ages even more so than than the PC one, but it's like both age well, but it's like the Dreamcast is like like, we all know how unappreciated the Dreamcast is it's like great, you know, it's a great even if it didn't last long, it was short lived but yeah. due to Sega's, you know incomp, you know, this and that but it's like I'm playing Revolt on the Dreamcast and I think to myself what the fuck? This is actually mm -hmm. this is actually close to being better than the PC version. How is that even possible? Like, mm -hmm. like, like if I was a kid, I would have played it nonstop on the Dreamcast and not even. I would I would pretend to be sick and you know be <laughs> homeschooled, you know, and then just play it religiously. But no, I love the PC. Excuse to, to have more time with it. Yeah, but no, I play the. No, I always enjoy the PC version. And, and, and no, I, it's not that I'm not touching the PC version ever again anytime soon because I love the PC version. The Dreamcast I mean, version... That you got to like, do PC gaming like from that young. I didn't get a gaming PC until, like, what, early 2021? Oh, mm -hmm. that... No, like... I missed out on a bunch. Yeah, you missed out a lot, man. Like... There are a lot of great PC games I played, um, even when yeah, I was a kid. Like, 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 the PC release of Kingdom Hearts 3 was what finally persuaded me to get a gaming PC in the first place. No, I remember when I was a kid, I played a lot of PC gaming. You know, stuff like Lego Racers and 
what was it? I played a lot of Doom, okay? When I was a kid, I played Doom. Like, when my parents weren't there, I was like, yes, this is my game right there. You know? You know, and, you know, when my parents left, I would play a lot of Max Payne, you know? It's like Max Payne and Max Payne 2. And also some GTA, you know? And speaking mm -hmm. of GTA, since we're talking about open world, world, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit tired, but The Simpsons Hidden Run was still was also my crack cocaine. I remember <laughs> playing it with yeah, my brother, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you know, and we also played a lot of, you know, like you, you know, a lot of SpongeBob games, and also what is it? Um, we played a shitload of Star Wars games back in the day: Jedi, Jedi Knights, Jedi Outcast, Jedi fucking what is it? Jedi Academy. Um, episode one racers like though on the topic of being superior I say the arcade version is superior but it's like I don't want to go to a complete tangent I'm just saying it's such a great game and I even own the Dreamcast version and even though they are surprisingly the same exact game except only the Dreamcast version has like fucking soundtrack ripped off of the star wars movies from john williams it's like eh, it just it's like yeah a lot of games that i played on pc it's like you are missing out on a lot and i remember okay but like it's like a span of an entire decade like shit i like if it weren't for pc games i wouldn't have steam to begin with like Shit, I played a lot of Half-Life 2, even though nowadays I don't think it's a, a, that good of a game. But still, I remember playing that. I have played a lot of, what is it, Dead Space, a lot of fucking, um... Man, there's a lot. <laughs> Man, yeah, I mean, um, most, I played... Most of my childhood, small childhood games are either, like, like early Sonic games or early yeah. licensed games. Yeah, like, like I played a lot of TF2, you know. No, I played licensed games too. Literally, the first video game I ever played. You know what it was? What's up? The Polar Express on the GameCube. Yes. Before I ever even saw the movie. Oh man, which is funny. I actually have an experience. Um, watch. I remember going into the old Neonopolis before that theater shut down five years later but nowadays it's everything else it's a karaoke it's a karaoke and it's a it has a karaoke bar it has a nerd bar it has like an art gallery like and it also has the heart attack grill but um anyway no um what was I gonna say so the neonopolis had a movie theater okay and uh, i remember going to see the polar express when i was like i don't know 10 years old i remember this event because once the move once the movie was about to start they mistakenly played ray you know the ray charles charles biopic mm -hmm. yeah all right yeah ray so it's like this is, wow this is the best christmas movie ever <laughs> Hell yeah. Famous blues singer Ray Charles, blind as a bat. You know, that's that's my Christmas movie right there. You know, <laughs> screw Die Hard. This is a real Christmas movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's like... Yeah, you know what? I actually kind of had like a sort of a mix-up event at a theater too, but for something else. Yeah. Um. No, yeah, I mean, like... I don't, know, I don't know. Does anybody remember like the, uh, the, the last Airbender movie? Oh, that fucking M. The, Night Shyamalan pile of shit, yeah. Like 2009 or whatever? T 2010, 2010. 2010. You're not yeah. off, no. Yeah, yeah I, I was excited for it at first, but when I went to the theater to watch it, I ended up accidentally watching Avatar. Like, like the, the James Cameron movie. Avatar, because, <laughs> yeah, because that of the is. name. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I didn't actually have the Avatar in the title of the series, does. Yeah, no, like, yeah, family. a lot of people get that confused, you know. Oh, what is it, the uh, Nickelodeon cartoon or 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 that James or that James Cameron movie about big blue cats? <laughs> and then when I finally did see the movie, I was like, "What the fuck have they done?" Yeah, yeah, you know what? You know what? 
You know, like, I remember watching it, and I didn't even watch it in theaters because I don't want to spend money on this trek. I, because I, I, even to this day, I still think it's one of the best shows ever. But it's like, I remember watching it, and I think to myself, you remember that, you, you remember that one scene off of The Godfather that would end up becoming a meme where this guy's like, where Marlon Brando char- Marlon Brando's character is like, look how they massacred my boy. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen the Godfather. I'm sorry. Well, you do remember that one meme, you know, the look, look how they must. Yeah, yes, <laughs> no, that. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know that. I have not seen the movie. I don't know the movie. Okay, okay, okay. You ever see where Marlon Brown's like, oh, look what they flunked my ass? Yeah, look how they massacred my boy. Yes. Oh, they put on a dress and fucked me in my ass. And look how they massacred my boy. Yes, I, okay, but yeah, anyway, I remember watching... No, I remember watching it, and at the end of the movie, I thought to myself, the same way Marlon Brando did in the in in that one scene of The Godfather, going, look how they massacred my boy. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that there were, there were no sequels. I mean, yeah, it's obvious that it's a complete and total failure. Like... Wait, what? Wait, what movie? What the movie? Last, Airbender. Last Airbender. Made by M. Night oh, Shyamalan. I thought you were talking. Okay, I thought you were talking about Avatar, the other Avatar. No, no, like, no, are you guys no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. Oh yeah, the blue. Yeah, the blue cat people. No, the, there is an explanation as to why they changed the title behind the scenes. They don't want to confuse it with the James Cameron movie, which was coming out months prior. But it's like you know. The yeah. point is, yeah, you could do that, you could do this, or you could just play a senseless hit and run. All, all I'm saying. Hell yeah. Or the Sneeds feed and seed hit and run. You want to know what's fucked up about... Okay, dude, you want to know some super deep cut Simpsons hit and run lore that's related to Sneed? I'm not even joking. I've heard of it, but go on. Do go on. Okay, well, in level one and four... Four, when they not when the NPC player models, specifically in like the uh, the Cletus area of the map, is literally uh, Sneed. Yes. Uh, the the slim looking Sneed guy. That's li- li- he's literally in the game. Mm-hmm. Literally, Sneed is I, no bullshit. Sneed, it, I'm. Uh, I, it, it, Chuck didn't quite make it, but Sneed did. Sneed is straight up canon in the Simpsons Hit and Run. Whatever universe. I mean, it's a Simpsons, but Sneed literally is in Simpsons and Hanna, which is so fucked up that that's a real thing. Uh, um, but yeah. Yes. I, 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 I know some, all I'm going to say, I know some deep cut Simpsons hit and run more. That's like Weird say. Matt, for instance? Hmm? Like Weird Matt? Weird Matt, what? Weird Matt. What is Weird Matt? What, what do you mean by that? Okay, if you look up what Weird Matt is, there's always some crazy Simpsons, you know, conspiracy theories about Matt Groening's, you know, insert character. Weird Matt, where he's just appearing in every episode, oh, oh, but it's like... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he's cut content. They didn't, they didn't quite... They didn't feel comfortable putting... Um, was it Gr- Gumbly in the show? I mean, in the in Hit and Run, he is in the cut content though. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, um, Gumbly. Yeah, weird bat. Yeah, it's funny that when you think about a person who went to Epstein's island and and this guy is milking his cartoons, you know, it's like, look, this is why I'm not excited for the new future on because it. It doesn't need to be made, and the Comedy Central era is just awful. Like, there were some good episodes, don't get me wrong, but it's like... It's basically a hodgepodge of South Park and Family Guy and American Dad and all into one. And I'm not saying Fox's era was perfect and all. It does have some duds here and there, but it's like... But it's like, at least it... It it was trying to be its own thing. Wait, you're referring to seasons like six or eight, right? Uh, yeah, 
Yeah. Well, mm. yeah, the Futurama. Like, I know the season, the season order is out of order, to say the very least. But it's like, yeah, like, no, the Fox era is like, well, they, it will always have a place in my heart. It's not perfect, but... I, I didn't, I mean, I've watched Futurama like a million times, and I don't think, I mean, of course, just like, you can tell it's like, it's like, um, the writing is different, but I feel like it's, it's, it's par for par with like the original stuff. I, I at least never really noticed that much of a dip in quality. I, I, you can kind of tell it's a little bit different, but I think it's still very much Futurama. It's, it's like, um, it's, it's, it's it's it feels the same, but it just feels like um, they had to move some people around. Yeah, um, but it, at the end of yeah. the day, it's like you remember. So yeah, it's like Matt Groening's just wanting an excuse to milk some cartoons. Like at least Seth MacFarlane is trying, is doing his best to you know keep you know to you know shut up and ha let the writers do. Let the writers, cast, and crew their, do their own thing, you know? Which explains why American Dad is still going strong, surprisingly, after... Good morning, USA! No, like... Uh, um, and The Orville, uh, um, even though it just ended, albeit on a very sloppy note, The Orville's great, and the first Ted movie's great, and I gotta say, The Cleveland Show is underappreciated and needs more love, but... I think, um... My name is And I am proud to be right back in my hometown. <laughs> I, I think, uh... I don't think this is a necessarily unpopular opinion, but, um... I think, um, the first, like, two seasons of Family Guy are, like, fucking hilarious. And after after that, I don't know what season you want to point to the cutoff, but it, it, it's just, like... Literally, like, me and our friends were watching some Family Guy, right? Yeah, and we watched like some episodes that are like from season two and one, and we were like actually laughing. Yeah, like it's, like the show's funny. It's like actually a really entertaining, like stupid piece of shit. Like actually laugh, and then like seasons I don't know, like six onward or whatever the fuck. Yeah, you want to call yeah. It. Here's like, the thing. Ah, Peter, one time we went to see the clam. Uh, hey Peter, uh, I'm out the clam. <laughs> hey Peter, hey Peter, why do I sound like the yo mama guy? Uh, Peter, <laughs> come here. Uh, hey hey Peter. <laughs> hey Peter, hey Peter. I lied, you jerk. No, like, like the early oh, seasons, no, no, like. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Giddy, giddy. All right. All right. All right. Yes, again. All right. Hey. Ah, Cleveland. Peter. 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 Pen one fifth. Mind your business, Joe. Peter. Peter. Where's the oxygen, Peter? Peter. Times more funny if it was literally just like racist family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, if they were just like, all right, it's racist, then it would be so much more funny. Yeah, I think that's this is why you know the very early seasons. You know, seasons one through what is it? I don't remember seven. I believe they're a riot. Like I remember watching. And they're like a complete and total riot. They're like absolutely hilarious from start to finish. Like, but it's like, like I noticed that later on they've been burnt out. But even then they still kept the hilarity. They still kept consist, be consistent with hope, with the writing and whole, you know, with the jokes and all. But it's like, I don't know what season, but it's like I'm watching a totally different show. Like, yes. I've noticed that the animation has drastically changed for the worst, but I still remember that the humor was still funny. I think there's a very similar, si well, not a similar situation. Um, Aqua Teen Hunger Force, right? The It's pretty noticeable. Like, the first four seasons are fucking, like, and you can say even into five, but, like, I'm like, you know, I have a fucking meat wad profile too, so of course like yeah. I've been of course. But it's like I've probably only seen maybe a 
third of, of like all the Aqua Team Hunger Force there is because like the later seasons I watched them and I'm like ah, they're gr- I actually rem- I actually uh, watched okay so I'm going to have to disagree with you for seasons 1 through 4. Yeah, it's I have to disagree easy. with you because Okay, well you're wrong, but go ahead. You yeah. Can, you can get your incorrect opinion, but go ahead. Go ahead. You're all right. You're wrong, but go ahead. I actually have watched Aquatine and throughout the entire series they've been surprisingly consistent with the humor and it's really weird too like it's like it's got it's getting to the point where the show gets funnier and funnier every single time and it just yeah yeah I know the part of the course of Aqua T is that it makes zero sense whatsoever there's no plot you know it's just a like the perfect way to watch the show is for you to be stoned off your ass you know, kind of, yeah, yeah, but, but that is, that's the appeal. I will say, I think I'm afraid this the writing of those early seasons of Aqua Teen is so literally. Uh, this might be a hot take, um, yeah, but the like season two, season one, th- like the, their ability to make nothing hilarious <sighs> is like, like, awesome. Seinfeld. like literally fucking. Like the the first season and a half or whatever of Aqua Team, like there's there's no reason it should be that funny, and it is. Yeah, I, honestly, I it's still, against I'm the still... law to be this hysterical. But it's like watching rewatching the the whole season from start to finish. It's like okay, okay, now I get as to why I was laughing like a goddamn maniac, like like a mental patient as a ch- child, like watching this. This is some good shit. It, it, the writing is is really it, way way better than ha, than it has any right to be. Yeah, like literally. Like, like except for Beavis and Butthead and King of the Hill, I've never seen a show that's consistent throughout its run. And uh, uh, well, except for Seinfeld, actually. Um, Seinfeld, King of the Hill, Malcolm in the Middle. Um, what is it? Beavis Ooh. and Butthead and whatnot. No, but Aqua Teen as well like they're the from start to finish it's just hilarious all right i'm i'm gonna spit something to you i own or previously owned in the entire uh box set of seinfeld right okay here with that information after coming back and watching some seinfeld i've came to the conclusion that seinfeld fucking sucks Get the fuck out right now. I've come to the conclusion <laughs> that Seinfeld is not funny. As a former Seinfeld fan, I came back and I realized this show is not funny. To each his own. To each his own. To each his own. <laughs> hey, that's fair. As I was okay. saying, uh, uh, box set, box set Seinfeld fan over here. I came back, I watched it, did not laugh once. No bullshit. I think, well, the thing is, is that it's not everyone, it's not supposed to be everyone's cup of tea. So, um, if you're going into Seinfeld, don't expect it to be, like, this is a different route of comedy. Like, like, of course this is improv, you know, it's like, you know, and watching it, it's really amazing how they made, how, how they actually managed to do like I think the improv is what helped the show and it's not and they weren't trying to cut corners either I think the biggest um what was I gonna say I think the concept of a show being nothing actually start actually becomes more and more funny once you get the hang of it but I can see why nobody cares about it so Hey, it's not my business. I, I, I do think that that concept is pretty groundbreaking for that. Like, it's a show. Like, yeah, it's a show about nothing. But for that, for, for them to do it, and I'm saying this is Seinfeld here. For them to do it, to be that popular and that successful and have so much influence on comedy is very admirable. Yeah. I'm saying this is a Seinfeld hater. <laughs> as a resident Seinfeld hater, I have to say, hey, hey it worked on me. But here's the thing, here's the thing. I think 
Okay, if we have to, if we have to put Seinfeld on a pedestal, all right. Okay. Or if we have to if, discussion about Seinfeld, invariably, I'm just gonna rip the bandaid off. Curb your, enthusi- curb your enthusiasm, way better. Way yeah, better. I love curb your enthusiasm. Way no, I love so Curb Your Enthusiasm. My ass off at no, that <laughs> show is a complete riot. I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. No, like, yeah, I that I understand, but it's like I love Seinfeld, but I also love Curb Your Enthusiasm. Like, mm-hmm. but it's like Larry David being a bubbling idiot, and that's what makes the show hilarious. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. you know, like, no, that's the thing. If you look at shows like. It's always sunny in Philadelphia, and Mal- Malcolm in the Middle, and Arrested Developments. You know, and you know, everybody hates Chris, and you know, and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Those shows, and you know, King of the Hill, and you know, all these other shows, Beavis and ButtHead, and all these other shows, like Aqua Teen, all these other shows, they manage to work because you know. They know what they're trying to be. Sitcoms. They're trying they're trying to be episodic shows where they're trying to be more episodic where they where they do mundane situations and it ends up going out of control. Mm-hmm. And that's what I like about these shows, you know. They're not continu like <laughs> compare it to some continuity based show, you know, something like The Sopranos or Dexter or Sons of Anarchy or Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul or Stargate SG-1 or Star Trek, you know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. No, no, you were, you were right to do it. You were right to do it. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Yeah, keep, keep humming the theme song. I love the theme song. I love the theme song. No, no, uh, fucking, what was it, X-Files, 24, The Shield, Rescue Me, all these continuity-based drama shows, you know, you know, which sometimes have comedy elements, but it's like, you know, you look at these shows, but then compare it to, you know, episodic shows, more specifically sitcoms, you know, again, Workaholics, Arrested Developments, It's Always Sunny, you know, Fucking Curb Your Enthusiasm, King of the Hill, you know, Beavis and Butthead, Aqua Teen, you know, Family Guy, American Dad, Futurama, all these other shows, you know, it's like, yeah, you, there's a vast difference between, but it's like, they make it work because, you know, they don't want to, they make it work, they don't need to do more world, I can't even talk, world building because... You know, they're just they're just doing mundane situations that would end up being, you know, that would go out of control by, you know, mid at midpoint. Mm-hmm. I mean, they could do world building if they want to, but it's like, no, I mean, if I mean, they you need to do world building to, you know, for but it's like if you're gonna, but the thing is, you gotta have to make us impressed you gotta have to make us smile make us laugh mm-hmm. uh, uh, if i could change the subject of a uh, question that popped in my head sure go ahead uh so uh how do i word this uh, so is there a game that like uh came out of absolutely nowhere but you ended up absolutely loving the first time you see it Oh, mm. hmm. That's a great question. Let me check my That's Steam like, library. For me, for me, top example, have you heard of Hi-Fi Rush? Uh-uh. I played it. I played it. You did? Yeah. What'd you think? It's good. It's good. It's really good. It's really good. I, I wish I could play it, but my PC isn't powerful enough to run the Steam version, and I don't have an Xbox Series S or X. No. Well, I played it on the PC, so you don't have to. I don't have to worry about <laughs> p- playing it on a console because I hate consoles yeah, since I, I, 2006. I wish I could play it on my PC, but like I said, it's not strong enough to run it. Yeah, but no. Um, I don't think I've ever played a. No, I don't think I've played a new game in like seven years. Like literally. <laughs> you never heard of I don't blame you. 
The only no. two games I played uh, now are. Really cry as a rhythm game. Oh. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Like, like every okay. Every attack you make actually hits on the beat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like Beat Mania, but with more emotion. You know, like Yakuza. But no. Um... It feels like you're watching like an actual, like... It feels like you're watching a TV show in the style of, like, Ruby or the Dragon Prince. It's so good. Oh, yeah, like something like The Sopranos and, you know, continuity-based shows. But, um, you know, I actually um, played two games that came out that just came out like i don't really play games as much as i used to but i played two of them um one is pizza tower and mm -hmm. after playing it i was impressed i absolutely tower. yeah like it's an indie game and i fucking loved that game like oh. it's weird that like it's weird because I, again, I haven't even played, I haven't even touched a single, I haven't even touched most games, but it's like Pizza Tower is great. And the second game I'm also referring to is Hogwarts Legacy, a controversial <laughs> game, but I like it. And I don't give a fuck about Harry Potter, but I love Bro, Hogwarts I love Legacy. Hogwarts Legacy is a great game. So, like, how does Hogwarts Legacy play, actually? I haven't actually seen anything of it. Um, it's a... War like, Warframe. Yeah, it's similar to that of Warframe. I don't know what Warframe plays like, either. Doesn't give me a Warframe reference. Warf Warframe... No, no Warframe is a... Game. Warframe is a strategy RPG, you know? I, I played Warframe. So, is that what Hogwarts Legacy like, it's is like? like? It's like a third-person shooter, basically. Yeah. You run around, you, like, destroy goblins and shit. Yeah. Oh, that's so picture picture stuff like Doom or Call of Duty or Halo or Warframe, but in the Harry Potter universe. Okay, that sounds interesting, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the, the game has been ridiculed by social networking because, because oh, J.K. Rowling, he's... It's like, come on, come on, come on. I don't... What what whatever she said was based. I will. I, I'm I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. But um, yeah, Hogwarts Legacy is a great game. Nice. Yeah. Right. How about how about this? Uh, ahead, is there any ahead. game? Uh, is there any game that you've been anticipating for a long time that you're yes. loving when it finally releases? Oh, never mind. <laughs> oh, what? What was the question? I'm sorry. What was the question? Okay, so like. Okay, think of a game that you've been anticipating for a long time, oh, and fuck. when it finally releases, you end up really loving it. Oh, fuck. And I mean, like, like you're, you're just begging for more, to hear more content about it. I, I sincerely, I cannot think of a single game that I, like, have, like, I was, like, super hyped about. It came out, and I was like, this is awesome. It's always been disappointment. Yeah, like... Literally. Ever since the 2010s, I've seen nothing but disappointments. Like, and I'm not saying all of them are. Like, most of them you can you can you can find in a, which is no, no, which is Howe. which are Lord sadly Howe. That was one game. Mord How, Mord How, Mord How, sick. Mord Mord Howe. Howe. sick. What is that? Mord Howe. What is that? Uh, it's like chivalry, but like you can throw pommels at people and shit. Mm. Um, Mord How is sick. That's that's one game. Mord How, Mord How. I found one game, Mordhau. Mordhau's, Mordhau's fun. Okay, I, I can Fire think of Earth. one. Um, uh, I can think of like the three examples at the top of my head. Kingdom Hearts 3, Freedom Planet 2, and Bayonetta 3. Alright. The game that I... Yeah, those are like three games that like have been in development for like a long while. When they released, I thought they were very much worth the wait. No, I remember playing Rayman Origins when it first came out on the PS3, which is weird Ooh. considering back in the day, like, back in the day, it was all ra fucking ra rabbits, you know, craze. And it's like a curious pandemic. We know, we call it the rabbit fever. <laughs> Wait, I, I yes, but, example. but, yeah, hang on, hang on. But, um, ahead, I remember, ahead. um, yeah, because at the at that point I was like, when are they gonna make a Rayman game? I played Origins, I loved it. 
and then I played Legends. The next game, I loved it even more. Like both games are great. And they should and like if Ubisoft wasn't hell bent focusing on either Rabbids or Assassin's Creed or Just Dance or Tom Clancy to a lesser extent, they would have focused on the titles that we some people love, but Lord knows that's ever gonna happen because Ubisoft's just being Ubisoft. The uh, the other example I had was um, Smash Ultimate. Uh, okay, is that is a great example. For reference, for reference, right? I'm a or I play a lot of projects mainly, right? And uh, I play on a PM. Fuck Project Plus. We play we play 3.6 PM all day. We don't take we don't play anything else. We play 3.6 PM all day. Um, That's based. So we play 3.6 p.m. all day, every day. Fuck Melee, fuck Smash 4, fuck 64, fuck Brawl. We're playing 3.6 p.m. all day, every day. Smoking on that fucking 64 pack, smoking on Smash 4 Ops. <laughs> Ultimate comes out, Ultimate comes out, and we're like, please, God. Like, we didn't see anything. It was like me and a couple of my buds. We, I pre-ordered Smash Ultimate. I got that little, like, card with the fucking Final Destination on right? Uh -huh. play Smash, we play Smash Ultimate, and we're like, we, we play it, and we're like, it, it feels kind of strange at first, but then, no bullshit, we played Smash Ultimate for eight hours straight. Whoa. Release day, release we played eight hours straight, and I won almost every single time. I'm not, I'm not trying to brag, I'm not trying to say, I'm just saying what it is, I won almost every single match. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Um, no, like... I actually have plain as fucking whoever really. I have a very I, I actually have a very similar reaction with Ultimate like I love Melee and I also love Project M. I love the two a lot. I did not care for Brawl and I did like 3DS because I own the 3DS and um the 64 I also did not care. But no, back to what I was saying. I played Ultimate with my friends because I don't own a Switch and I never intend to own a switch because i am not a soy boy beta male and I, but at, but then again i am not an alpha no. chad but anyway <laughs> anyway soy boy. anyway soy boy would say that's all i'm saying bro that's all i'm saying what's wrong with the switch <laughs> that's all i'm saying look okay but anyway anyway don't be don't be a don't be um um projecting or nothing yes that's i know i'm projecting i'm <laughs> I'm sorry. No disrespect to anyone who owns a Switch. You're cool in my book. No, you know what? You know I'm with you on this, dude. If you own a Switch, fuck you. Yeah, yeah, I'm messing with you again. Yeah. Fuck you for owning a Switch. <laughs> if you own a Switch, you should kill yourself. <laughs> I'm with you on this. You opened my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I red-pilled you. Actually, you're a cool person if you do, but... You're a cool person. I think we, we, Look, I think we need total switch owner death. They <laughs> killed them all. <laughs> so what? So it's going to be like... Uh, I don't know. Um, so it's going to be like um, a holocaust full of switch players? Yeah, literally. Yeah. Switch holocaust. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. No, total no. switch death. Just stop. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, but anyway, um, no, I have a similar reaction to Ultimate. I... Never own a Switch, but I do play it with my friends uh, a lot, actually. I played it, um, look, I played um, Switch at a bar, and I played, because there was also some, but no, um, I remember playing it as well um, during work, as, and I also played it um, at a call, at, you know, during community college, during game day, and it's like, yes. The more I play it, the happier I become because I'm now kind of an expert with Ultimate. Mm -hmm. Like for real, like I like I still love Melee and I still love Project M and I still think Nintendo is treating people like absolute garbage. No, no, not 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 the workers, not the workers. They're doing great, but it's like. As a company that's trying to manipulate copyright, 
that's where I draw the line. But anyway, yeah. But no, um, Ultimate, I actually liked it. I really liked it a lot. Yeah, Ultimate's probably one of the more, uh, or, uh, less irritating Smash games. Smash 4 is probably the worst Smash game ever. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being hyperbolic. I would rather play every other Smash game than Smash 4. And the reason why is because I played so much Smash 4 that the flaws of that game and the way it feels have, like, just imprinted and burned out on me. Like, I can go to 64 and be like, alright, this game's trash, but like, you know, there's some stupid shit about it. Smash 4 is, is just grindy, grindy and unfun and slow. And we're not even gonna talk about Bayonetta or Cloud. Smash 4 in a vacuum is not a fun game. Like, and it took me so long to realize that because fucking I was a scr- I was the last kid, you know, fucking whatever. Um, you know, that's actually, that actually brings up a point that I've been wondering about for a while. Mm-hmm. Okay, so like, so like, I know like the overpowered tiers is like Fox and Melee, Man Knight and Brawl, Bayonetta and 4. Who are the overpowered tiers in 64 and Ultimate? Like, I've never heard anyone the, like... That's the thing about 64, is that I think... I think Cur- I think it's either Kirby or Pikachu are like the best characters in the game. The thing about the, 64... Like the SS tiers of 64? Yeah, but I, I mean, I can check like a tier list right now, but I, as I recall, I don't, re- I mean, there's certainly characters that are like definitely, you know, to some degree better, but I, I thought that 64 at least was like, it was, you could pretty much win with any character, like more or less, like okay, it's, it, it really is not that unbalanced. Okay, so who's the SS tier in Ultimate then? Oh man, depends every different fucking patch they come out with. I haven't kept up with Ultimate in like four years, so... <laughs> Have they... When was the last patch? I don't even fucking know. I know that is good. I know that, um, Joker's good. I know that, uh... Fucking... The Dragon Quest hero? Hero is, is good. Uh, Snake is good. Yeah, Snake um, is great. You know, um... You know what, fuck it. I'll just look up... I'll just pull up Smash Ultimate tier list. Um, I'm just gonna have some picks I'm not gonna do with, but whatever. Yeah. I'll pull this shit up. Oh, yeah, Steve. That's right. People complain about Steve. Yeah, Steve. Yeah. Minecraft Steve. Steve. Yeah, Steve is S tier, ZSS, Palutena. Uh, Wow, this this tier list makes no sense. They say Pikachu is S tier, which is not true. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that is not true. Okay, this is a very. I rather I have Jigglypuff. You know, it. Tier. What's up? I said this is an outdated tier list. They have they have Robin S tier, which is not. Yeah, true. it's not. Yeah, it does. It doesn't even work. No, Jigglypuff you know is I mean, much better than Pikachu in terms of playability. He, the weird thing about tier lists is that, like, for ninety percent of people it literally doesn't matter because nine percent of smash players are fucking scrubs it doesn't even oh matter. yeah like, yeah like this is not like get beat out whooped on by the fucking like a fucking five-year-old playing jilly puff can whoop their ass so it doesn't even matter yeah what fucking character they play. yeah like fucking if you are a smash player i remember like what, what was it was it inkling like top tier at one point um, uh, think, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was top. Like Inkling was top tier for a while. Okay, you here. Where's here's the. A, uh, who fucking cares? I, I have a. I have an example about tier list, and it's specifically for fighting games, right? Yeah. If you can post it on the voice chat, right? Yeah. What? If you can, please post post it on the voice chat. In fact, uh. What I'm about to do is post the actual roster that we did that we talked about during a during a live stream. Oof. Okay. Yeah. No, but this is an example of of, of why tier lists don't matter for nine percent of people. Street Fighter Three, right? The character Remy. He's considered like bottom three or whatever, right? Uh-huh. Uh huh. I can be anyone I know with Remy, and that's literally just because like I play the most third strike out of the people I know. So of course Remy's is like like a really good character because I just play him the most out of the people we know, and I play third strike the most. 
So I can beat basically everyone I know as Remy just because I play it more and they're all scrubs. <laughs> so but what about like, characters like King DDD or what is it, Terry you know, from... Know? Yeah, King DDD. But also, not, not just him, but also, um, what is it, Terry from Fatal Fury or... Mm-hmm. Ryu from Street Fighter and yeah, what is it? Um, I I I will say um, uh, Daniel Dingo, you can tell he have you have to play him in a very yeah unorthodox setup, Oki, whatever fire game you want to use. He's definitely uh, they're definitely characters that are stronger than uh than than King Dedede. But he has some very underutilized tools, which um, if you are a Smash player and want to put in the effort, I think King Didi can ca- not carry you. You got to you have to put in some work with him. He's definitely not like like bottom whatever, but he's not. He's like a low mid tier for comparing all uh-huh. the characters together. But he is surprisingly fun, and uh, you. Pl- I, I like playing King Dedede. He's he's he he. You have to think, which is nice. He's definitely like a a, a strange kind of outside, outside the norm character with his steps and, sh- and shit and his normals and stuff. But King Dedede, once you play him and kind of get a grasp, he's like surprisingly nuanced and really fun to play. Um, but he's not as good as Sonic, that's for sure. <laughs> that's for damn yeah, sure. I, I love playing the Sonic man. Yeah. <laughs> that is for damn sure. Yeah. Um, well. I do have to say, um, mm-hmm. Go on. what about um, what about Ripley? Like, how how do we rank Ripley? Ripley? You know, for Metroid. Ridley? Yeah, Ridley. Oh, I, Ridley. Yeah, Rid- <laughs> I called it Ripley. Uh, believe it or not, no. I haven't played the Ridley a lot. I haven't played it really a lot, but I remember being I remember him being pretty fun to play as. I think the problem with Ridley is he has a big hitbox. Like that's literally it. I, think I can his see. Are like five no, I can see that. I can <laughs> see that. No. Um. Uh, Tell you one character that I really want to get better at playing as is Sora. Really? Huh? Yeah, I, I really want to know how to do like aerial good aerial combos as Sora because he's like he just feels really fun to play as. Right. At the same time, I don't really know how to play as him for the most part. Yeah. I'll be honest. I haven't played Ultimate since uh, Kazuya came out, but I played him so much back in like the earlier days of Ultimate. I still have. Yeah. And legacy skills from playing so much fucking that trash game Smash Four. Yeah, like, I haven't really. Yeah. I, like, I don't yeah. really play Ultimate as much, but it's like, it's like. But then again, I don't really play that much video games as much. Like, like that's why I haven't... It's been a long time since I've actually legit played TF2 because... Mm. Yeah, I... I'll say something else. Ultimate has been way more fun to play as for me ever since I got, got my Switch modded. Mm. Oh, nice. But uh, I remember playing... Uh, fucking... Mm. I re- Yo, I... Like, it's been a long time since I've legit touched... TF2, like, I played TF2 God knows how long, and then nowadays I just can't even play it because, and it's not just the community, which yes, that also is one of the reasons, but it that's affecting the game, but it's also because TF, because the, the commu- most of the community is now running the game, making making, you know, Steam you know, having Steam allow this, the, rather than just updating new levels and new weaponry and whatnot, they let the community do whatever the, they want. And that's and this is pretty much the Zoomer community these days. It's like, yeah, I'm like that one scene off of Whiplash where um, J.K. Simmons goes goes to you know the guy who who has his hands tired, bleeding because he couldn't play anymore, and he says to him. You're done. And that's how I feel about TF2. It's just that it's over. You're done. Mm. Yeah. It's over. Yes. It's over, it's bros. Over. It's over, is it? Yeah, but, um, uh, but can I just say for the record that um, this um, 
doesn't come to a surprise that um, this doesn't come to a surprise that a lot of people that a lot of video games are completed total dog shit. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's why. See, okay, here's what I tell people whenever the conversation of like games or whatever comes up. I'm like, there's so many games that don't suck that you can play for free right now like literally dude fucking here, here okay tekken 6 right it's a tekken game it's kind of mid but it's pretty fun yeah there's a dedicated ps3 online netplay community for that fucking game game yep. came out in 2007 they already uh -huh. have a fucking netplay community up for that ready to go literally yes it's great Another another example, Street Fighter Three Third Strike, fucking Fightcade. You can. You can oh my God! Yes. Fucking yes. Run up on Fightcade and you're just playing Third Strike with random people. Back okay on Fightcade One, you could call them all sorts of slurs and names, and it was it was just like part of the culture. It Fuck was like yeah, Modern man. Warfare Two lobbies, right? Yes. Nowadays with Fightcade Two, it's become so much more like. I guess, uh, 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 sensitize, is that the Sanitize. Right? Sanitize, as with everything Sanitize, else in you. this world. Yeah, so, dude, back in, uh, dude, Fight Kid 1, man, you just had people calling, you, like, I'm not gonna say it, but it was, it was a lot of Brazilians and Serbians getting mad at each other. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right! Saying, saying every slur under the sun, and nowadays in the V, uh... You're um, gonna get banned and, for saying such. Yeah, literally, it's like, you have to... You have to sign. It's called like the fucking like fight, 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 fighting game code of conduct, which is basically like don't call people slurs. It's just like man, that's the whole point of those old games. You just fucking trash talk people. Like, yeah, like too. like yeah, like, but nowadays. Like, <laughs> yeah, because nowadays in yeah, because nowadays you if you're in people. yeah, like nowadays you're gonna get banned for trash talking. It's like why? I mean, that's the whole point. You know, that's the whole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, my, um, you know, I really do not mesh with that, which is why I don't participate in chat um, at all. Um, yeah, like but, I don't really go on V. Like I don't really part like. That's why I never owned a console since you know, the 3DS, and it's like I hate every console since then. A lot of consoles are just the same exact shit. Like not only that, but it's like they're not only are they just movies try to act as if they're games but there aren't but it's also the fact that online chatting is Dude. it's just like <laughs> online chatting is just now becoming shit because you can't even trash talk people anymore Dude, okay vc uh uh me, vr chat right vr, VR chat VR or vr lit vc lit v uh vr chat Dude, like literally, VR chat is some of the best entertainment you can have. I've done this a couple times. Uh, uh, there are people who do it. Like, there's this trolling community. I'll get to it, into it later. But uh -huh. like, literally, like, literally, you go to VR chat. You just roll up and you just fucking be as mean as possible to people. <laughs> you just be a fucking yes. the biggest shithead you can, dude. Yes. It's so. Dude, they get so mad. It's yeah, like, they're sensitive. Like it's this. It's like such a pronounced schism with like people who have like been online a lot. For like, if you call them a, a you know whatever hard R, they're like whatever, dude. And like, if you like, you wrote to some kid, you're like, hey, you fat fucking, you know, F, F, yeah. hard F slur, you fucking fat F word, you should kill yourself, you stupid. They're gonna st they just start losing it. <laughs> like, Even if they're trying to... Like, like, get confrontational and start crying. You just keep making fun of them. Yeah, because like, we live in a know. world full they of... No, dude. Yeah, because we live in a world full of fear-mongering. They, they want you... They want everything to be san sanitized because we live in a culture of fear ever since, you know, half, almost a decade. And it's like, yeah. Dude, it's, it's so fucking easy it should not be as easy as it is like i i tell people like 
We live in the golden age of Tron, which is, that's kind of corny to say, but like, it's so, no, let me fix that. We're living in the golden age of accessible Tron. There we go. There we go. That's a better way of putting it. Yeah. Because, I mean, I think the quote-unquote gold, golden age of Trillin would be probably, I mean, there are different eras. I can get into it, but, like, now Yeah, the 2000s it's, it's was so a golden age. It's easy. It's so easy. Yeah. There are Zoomers that would pretend to act that, that Newgrounds was full of Friday Night Funkin', which didn't even exist then. But it's like Newgrounds was more than just that. And not only that, the internet, the internet back in the day was, was a golden age. But that's not what the people who pretend to act that they grow, they, they grew up in the 2000s want. No, they believe that they're the same exact, no. I mean, that's he, another thing is that like, oh, I only hear a lot of people like the golden age, which is why I don't like that phrase. Cause they're like the golden age of new grounds is like. 2004 or whatever but then the same people like five years ago before that would say the golden age of whatever was albino Geo3, black sheep albino black sheep white tm AOL chat yeah aol chat 90, yeah 93 so uh, hey guys so uh, uh you guys can keep talking about what you're talking about i gotta get going all right all right, all right. peace good. out all right, see ya yeah sonic profile mm -hmm. picture <laughs> yes, the big wild for five picture. It, yes. yes. No, but like everyone says that everything is like the gold. Oh, that was the golden era. That was the golden age. It's like I think you are mistaken. You're probably correct, but like I, it sounds like um, a failure to adapt, and you're mad because yeah, like you got you got you got you got pwned by by fucking corporations and shit. Like um, and not to mention, let's. Lest we forget, during the 90s through early 2000s, when the internet, like the mo like the modem, it's like the, DL the, the DSL modem was completely slow as shit. Like, it, it actually angered a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it actually angered a lot of people. I mean, I mean... By the mid two thousands, internet actually by the early two thousands, internet dial up there are already internet dial up modems that became faster and faster, you know, and you know which is great. But remember, there used to be a time where the internet was so fucking slow. Yeah, literally. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have anything to say other than um. Yeah, I use I yeah, the golden age. I think um, yeah. You know, I'm I'm gonna make a prediction now. I think in two years from now, I'm gonna look back and say I'm a was a fucking idiot. Now is the most is the most trolling has been easily accessible. Cause it, it's just gonna get worse and worse. The more people try to like sanitize and moderate shit, and the less people can handle it. The more that these that people like me. Or not people like me. Fucking shitheads on the internet are just gonna roll up and just start typing fucking literally whatever. Not because they actually, like, hate you, but just because they- you get mad. Like, that's a lot of- that's a lot of reason why, like, people say that, like, they're- they're, like, you're racist, sexist, transphobic, whatever. I- I sincerely think a lot of trolls online legitimately are not, like, sexist, racist, whatever. They just- say that because it's the stuff you're not supposed to say and they're the types who really will get offended at that are like the easiest to prey upon you just roll up to any fucking like lgbt streamer and be like you know beep, 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 you know you just type away and it's not even because like like i mean of course there's going to be some shitheads who like legitimately like are actually racist that's not the point, though. The point is that, like, this stuff is so easy to do because these fucking, like, protected classes of people online have no exposure to being made fun of yeah. and handling it. So it's like, I mean, you can say, like, we need more, like, moderation against yada, yada, yada. Whatever. Yeah, that's like, the that's thing. That's not going to work. 
Yeah, that's like not gonna work. It's gonna have the opposite reaction. That's not gonna work, dude. Yeah, like, which is the thing, you know, with everything taking over. This is why I cannot really stand Discord. As, like, I, I've, I've grown to hate Discord for the past few years, and it's like, why even bother? It, they're, they're, you're, they're full of, they're always going to be full of groomers and trannies and other sorts of man children so why bother Thank you <laughs> wait you're calling me a pedo what the fuck i'm calling you a pedo and a man child <laughs> yours okay you, you you think you're gonna expose me you think you you're gonna expose bro oh shit. okay i will i will say <laughs> this about public servers there was this one, it was like a, it was, I think it was a TFB TV server I was in. Uh-huh. I legitimately, like, really like their content. They do, it's very informative and, like, very, like, useful information. It was, even, like, things that I like, like, it was the Mondo Megabit server, and it was a TFB TV server. I came in, I'm like, this place fucking sucks <laughs> so i like oh. just tried to get banned as fast as possible <laughs> yeah it's like, like i got i got banned from mondo megabits in like probably not even three days and i wasn't even posting anything egregious i was just like let's get some mondos and just spamming the chat shit and posting random shit um like literally even things that i like yeah, the server, like, 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 most servers... I like, I do not like on Discord, because they're fucking public servers and they're full of fucking shitheads. Yeah, Same like, the yeah, because they dictate whatever they, they think they should do in the, in the servers. It's like, no, they, they're in the server just to have a good fun. You don't dictate what to do. Yo, oh, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. You need to, like, read the rules. You need to, like, read the rules, okay? And it's like, retard brain. I don't have to read the like the thing is yeah yeah the thing is we just we just post whatever we like because it's fun you know but it's like yeah that's why i mean the thing is i've been taking a break from discord in some like in some times but it's like at the same time like I don't want to sound like the guy who... I don't want to sound like the Sigma Chad who goes to a 24-hour fitness is while while trying to trade stocks on a, on an app, on my, I, on a fucking phone and then come back mm. home just to sleep for four hours and then do the same shit over and over. But no, um, I'm not trying to be that guy. Like, no, like, the thing is, I'm not trying to be like that Alpha Chad with a Sigma grind set. Mm -hmm. but at the same time I have the mentality of that because you see the you look at the world nowadays and it's like they they will dictate to you whatever you know they want you to do what they think you should do yeah yeah because we live in a culture of fear for like half a decade and almost actually almost a decade but because it's like, it's like, whatever, like, this is why I don't really go on YouTube as much as I used to, because most of the content creators are just completed to, they're, they're, they're full of themselves. They're egotistical. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's like, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Like, that's why I, I don't, I, yeah. yeah, that's I why agree. I don't, yeah. I'll I'll say um I would be more fired up about that topic, but I've I've plugged a, I've plugged out from so much of that shit already that like yeah. I don't have anything to be mad over. <laughs> so it's like fucking um yeah, a lot of stuff like if I don't like it or if I'm like aware that it's bait, I'll just not engage with it. Which is like that takes yeah. time to like uh what the fuck? Okay. That takes time to, like, come to that sort of, I guess, mindset, mentality, whatever you want to say. Like, this is bothering me and it's not important. I'm just going to not engage with it. Like, that that took me a while for, um, 
for me to understand that you can just disengage with shit that does not matter and is just trying to make you mad, which is what people should do with trolls. If someone's calling you, you know, hard R Johnson, whatever. That's, yeah, just <laughs> accept like, it. Just, just accept like, just it. Why don't you just not care? Like, literally. Yeah, all, all you gotta to do, do is fucking accept it. Don't fucking overreact because someone's calling you an F slur or a hard R slur or whatever, you know? All you gotta do is shut up. All right, just shut the fuck mm -hmm. up. Enjoy it while it lasts. You know, just just enjoy it. You know, just be cool with it. Be nonchalant. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. I kind of gotta go. But yeah, actually, uh, yeah. Before we do, I just want to thank everyone for watching, or for not watching, for listening the TVB cast, and um, mm -hmm. of course, it. I'm TVB, and now with my only guest who is just about to leave and so am i um <laughs> hey, bumbler yes Yo, hell up? yeah and um i'll see you next time and remember um say it with me vc lynn <laughs> say it with me vc L oh fuck you too <laughs>